One of the things I love most about a good chicken piccata is that when you eat it, you really feel like you're in a restaurant. It's also a recipe that can be pulled off in one hour or less in your own home, and that's a nice bonus. But enough of this intro, let's learn how to make this thing. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now let's go! go, go. The ingredients for a good chicken piccata really is nothing crazy, but I will reveal them as we go. First, we need to start with the chicken. And breasts are definitely the way to go. I just start by cleaning off a little bit of the fat, and then I'll just slice them directly in half because for a good piccata, you want a pretty thin breast. And what I like about this is you get four really great portions out of just two breasts, which is nice. Lately, I've just been using two layers of saran wrap instead of something like a gallon Ziploc bag. If I use that bag, I feel like I'm just wasting a perfectly good bag, and this saran wrap works absolutely fine. And come on, guys, who needs a meat pounder when you have a super large pot? I swear to you, this works better than a meat pounder. And I'll hammer this chicken down until it's anywhere from a quarter inch thick to a third of an inch. You really don't want it to be thicker than this. I would also highly recommend putting salt and pepper on the chicken breast itself rather than in the flour. Master Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty! <laughs> Marcus, I need your help. Come crank this thing, dude. Get it, man. Say More? When. Say when. Hold! Say when. Fire! Keep firing, man, damn it! Going as fast Give as me I everything can. you got! If you put your seasoning directly in the flour, there's no way your chicken is gonna be seasoned really nicely. And then I'll just sprinkle the chicken with the flour. Doing it this way doesn't leave me with a bunch of leftover seasoned flour that I'm just gonna throw away anyway because I use chicken in it. Take a large pan and bring that up to medium high heat, at which point we add olive oil in. That's olive oil, and just let it heat up for about 30 seconds before carefully adding in your chicken breast. Always lay away from you when you do this so the oil won't splatter up and get you. Fry your chicken breast for 90 seconds per side. At this point, I'll just remove those from the pan and set them on a wire rack while we work the rest of the sauce. Now it's time to start cooking the pasta. I'm taking about four quarts of water here, adding about a tablespoon of salt. You don't want it salty like the ocean. You just want it salty. I chose bucatini pasta for this today. You can use whatever shape of pasta you like. We're gonna keep this pasta really simple, starting with some olive oil and fresh chopped garlic. Just cook that over medium heat for two to three minutes. And then we add butter, my friends, one of my favorite ingredients on the planet. And butter and olive oil together is a match made in heaven. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Once that butter is melted and your garlic is just a little bit slightly golden brown, we'll add some chili flakes and cook those for just about 30 seconds. You do not want them to get black. And I just use pasta water to stop the cooking process after that. That is a really great trick. I follow a very similar process when I'm cooking a lot of Italian pastas is that if the box says to cook the pasta for 10 minutes, you cook it eight minutes minutes in the water, two minutes in the pan. You always want to finish cooking your pasta in the pan. At this point, taste it for salt. It may need a little bit, but that is personal preference. I definitely added a little. Now that your pasta is done, let's quickly hammer out this chicken piccata sauce. Take the same pan you cook the chicken in, medium to medium high heat. More olive oil in first, followed shortly after by garlic. After about 90 seconds, your garlic is lightly golden brown. Add in your capers. Cook those for 30 seconds and then add in your shallots. Cook the shallots for 30 seconds and then add in your white wine. Now white wine is not exactly traditional for a chicken piccata, but I just love it. It gives that kind of restaurant taste to me. But by all means, you can absolutely just use lemon juice, which is the next ingredient I'm adding. Chicken stock is next, straight in. We're then gonna reduce this sauce by 50%, so cut it down in half. Lower the heat and start working in cubes of cold unsalted butter, just whisking constantly and add those little by little. At this point, your chicken breast is perfectly cooked. All you need to do is add that back into the sauce, keep the heat low, and slowly let it heat up for about two minutes. And it's as simple as that, my friends. Chicken piccata, done. Another thing I would recommend before serving your pasta, just add a little more pasta water to reheat it. It should be perfect after that. We'll twist up a little bit of our bucatini pasta, lay that down on a plate, chicken on top, and then just cover it with sauce. There's only one thing left to do, my friends, and you know how it goes on this channel. We eat what we make. Coming in for a taste. God, this looks good. I'm gonna get everything, one bite. Oh my God, I don't even know how to do this. Uh... Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Now, before I go, I would like to dedicate this video to somebody very special. Araya, I wish you a very, very happy birthday and a whole lifetime full of amazing friends, unforgettable experiences, and most importantly, delicious food. A very special happy birthday to you, Araya. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth.